that we are. Amen. We prejudge ourselves. There's others that prejudge us. Um, you know, and then of course, you know, God doesn't want us to give up on any areas within our lives. And especially when God has a promise and God has a seal on all these areas. Amen. And wanting to know that, you know what, God is transforming us every portion and part of our lives. That he is daily turning our lives around. He's turning our um, lives around into his point of view as we see it in God's view and not in our own view of what God is using uh, to us to make us better, to make us stronger, to make us bolder, and to be able to do all that God says that I am, which is sometimes very hard when we just see ourselves down versus on the up. Amen. And once again, I apologize for the overcast there because we have been having some rainy days and the sun is just barely coming out right now so we just kind of work with the lighting as much as we can at this point amen but day number 11 is i don't want you to give your hopes up amen you know there's always certain poor uh points and parts of our time where we feel that maybe we're cut off or maybe someone doesn't hear us or maybe it's because someone doesn't know us that we give our hopes up. You know, there was one time where someone had spoke about, you know what, I'm just going to throw the towel, you know, I'm just tired of it. I'm just going to throw this towel away. But in the same uh, uh, uh retrospect of all these things that when we want to throw the towel away you know what god in turns get that same towel and he just throws it back to us and tells us you know what it's not your time the time is not uh the end of things and you're not at the end of things no you're just at the beginning because just like there's the beginning of many things that calls us out to do as well as God is in the middle of all things that God calls us out to do. Even to the very end to all the things that God calls us out to do. Amen. And so this is the the loving father. This is the, the loving father that we are held in his hands in all of these areas where we can grasp the hand of God and hold on to God's hand. Amen. I mean, I want you to think about the swings that are on the, the big carousel that they're just swinging and they're swinging. But if you weren't literally uh, sitting on something, you'll be having to hold on to something for dear life as you literally make that big circle. Because as you have that momentum and you're going and the things are are turning and and things are moving and things are functioning you know the the atmosphere or the gravity begins to pull as you are taking that swing and as you're swinging and as you're going it becomes a force of an impact that actually even makes it go even that much more until literally things kind of like start winding down and then the momentum is now bringing you back to the ground amen and so what i'm trying to grab a hold of this area of your life is that we're grabbing a hold of god's hand that even though you can't hold on to all these things knowing that god has your hand and there is the hope there is the promise there is the 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 conjunction for the function of everything that God wants you to do. God is in the midst of all of this. You know, he got your name on the palm of his hands. I'm telling you, God's got this because he's got you. Amen. And when you totally release your hand into God's hand and God says, you know what? I got you, baby. I got you. I got you. I got your back. I got your protection and I got all those things that are surrounding you to take care of you, to love on you, to make you flourish. I am watering your ground and I'm telling you that you are becoming into something great, into something strong. 
into something so wonderful, amen, that God is just creating in you as well as through you, amen. And so today's word is don't give your hopes up, amen. Don't give your hopes up. There in day 11, we are seeing some things that are magnificently taking place in your lives because we are going through these 40-day fasts of wrong thinking going back into right thinking. Amen. And so I said, we see here after only 10 days, we certainly are starting to see a pattern of positive thinking. We're thinking biblically and we're replacing those things that are negative of unbiblical thinking into thinking godly thinking of what God is speaking. And that's exactly what the fast is designed to do because now we are thinking God's way. We're unplacing the long unbelieved lies with the truth of God's word. See these thought patterns that we're thinking they're they're shaping and of, of our expectations and of our actions, the expectations and the actions that they're just like a magnet all through our life that attracts these things which fills our minds. And sometimes those things that are around us are attracting more. If we're thinking negativity, negativity, then those things, negativity, can impact more of our lives versus thinking to a positive note in what God is saying about our lives. See, today's thoughts is don't give your hopes up. Now's not the time to give our hopes up on God, our hope on 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 life, our, our hopes, on the love. Come on now, because God is love. Amen. And he has suddenly, there's found it in its way into our heads where we can be thinking about giving up. We've been trained to doubt. We've been trained to have all types of disbelief, all types of a lower aspirations of expectations and to brace ourselves in mediocrity and even just of the status quo that you know what that I'll never go that far in life or I'll never go um up to the highest point okay but to hope is to look up our hope is to have a great expectation our hope is to live and you know what God wants us to live God wants us to have this hope it's like oxygen that we're breathing in and out of our lives it's like the light in these dark and this negative world when we think positive, the light comes on. When we are thinking negative, I want you to think like you're turning off the light in the situation versus turning on the lights to our situation to make things come alive with our hope. See, it's often said that man can live 40 days without food. Or 40 days, maybe even 4 days without water, or even 4 minutes without oxygen, but not 4 seconds without this hope. In Proverbs, there in 13, there in chapter, uh, chapter 13, verse number 12, it says that hope deferred makes a sick heart. It makes it hurt. It makes it, uh, painful it makes it sick the heart to be sick when there is no hope see when hope is put off to the side or it's dashed to the ground your heart becomes sick in other words there's a heaviness there's a a laden there's there's a burden uh the heart is hurting at this point where you feel sick when you stop hoping, and hope is a healer of the heart. So I'm expressing life today to your life. Maybe you have heart problems. And God is saying, I want you to grab your hope 
to my hope here today. I want you to stop being sick. I want you to put sickness to to uh, a side, and I want you to gain the hope. Anchor your hope in God here today. Anchor your hope as Jesus as your anchor and Jesus as your hope that ultimately the life that we're living, the process of life where he's taken us, the things that we have to go through, that we can keep our hope for those who are helpless, for those who are in distress, for those who are in their heartache. I'm telling you, God wants to bring deliverance and healing to your heart. If you lost hope within your life, now is the time to turn it around. Just like that big old swing of, of, of us taking of us to a momentum up in the air where things are turning and you, you're not sure where you're going, but you know you're going somewhere. The momentum is that maybe you can't hold all of God's hand, but God has yours. Maybe you have lost your hope over a loved one. Maybe you have lost your hope on getting a job or having the job or even maybe keeping the job that you have right now. Don't lose hope in God. Know that God is your source. And maybe you can say, you know what? Well, you know what? Let me just tell you here. You know what? God's been my problem on this. Because it seems like that the more that I've gotten a hold of God, that I've been transitioning and that I'm moving and that I'm going. And I'm saying today, good. It's good that you don't get stuck like Chuck. It's good that you're just not being stand still because... Standing still, even water that is standing still stinks. But still water stinks. And see, it's better when God steals the water because God is still moving. He's flowing in you. He's moving through you. He's going. And He is doing so many things that it's so awesome for your life that when even you feel that you're at your ends and you don't have no strength, we have the hope of God. And God has us and God's got your back. God's feeling on you. He knows you. He knows what you're going through. Maybe you're in a rock and a hard place. But even in the rock and the hard place, Jesus is the rock. Because Jesus is our hope. And the change today that we will be walking in. We're going to walk in boldness. We're going to walk in strength. We're going to walk in power because we are walking in. In this hope here today. Amen. See get your hopes up. Here today. That no matter what. You can always have hope. And Psalms there. In chapter 78. There in verse number 7 says. That they. That they might set. Their hope. In God. That is a challenge. For a change in our life today. That if we may set. Set is something secure. Set is something that it can't be moved. Because you just set the dial. You you set it to a certain mark. You've set it to a certain degree. You've set it into a certain place. That you know what? It is so set. That we now have this hope in God. See, we need to keep our hopes up. Because there's a lot of things that want to pull you down. But it's something else when we can look up. And have our hopes that are coming upwardly instead of downwardly. Can I hear an amen? See, in 1 John, there in chapter 3, there in verse number 3, it says that when you fix your hope on Him, you are then purified. See, because no longer will we be set and fixed on ourselves. 
You know, we talked about it before when we see ourselves and we see ourselves as self-centered versus Jesus-centered under the righteousness of God. That's what makes me right here today. That I'm able to set my life, to set my eyes on things above, to set my hearing on things above, to set my life on the rock, on things above. Why? Because God has all these precious things for me and he wants to move in my life with such a momentum. Come on there. That momentum to continually to grow, to continually to increase, to continually to rise. Come on now. To continually to go and to go and to go until literally we are in this flow of God. This is our momentum of keeping us up. 1 John 3.3 3 says that when we fix our hope on Him, you are then purified. You want to be purified? Okay, set your hope in God. Set your hope in the Lord. Amen. And when you don't see something happening, we're going to hope even more. You know what? You, I don't think things are going my way. Well, you know what? I'm going to set my hope in God. You know what? I don't see the finances coming in. You know what? I'm going to set my hope in God. You know what? I don't see what I want to be seeing. But you know what? We are going to set our hope in God. Because when we set our hope in God, it is so well established. It is so well being that it's only God. It's only God. It's only God. He's my Savior. It's only God that He's my Redeemer. It's only God that He's our lover. It's only God that He is our friend. He's our very best friend in our time of need, in our time of help. In our time of hope that we can set it in God. Even when we think we're wrong, you know what? He's purifying us. You know why? Because we have set our hope in God here today. See, when you don't see something happening, we are going to hope even that much more. Can I hear an amen? See, the fact that you don't see it, it gives hope to a reason to maintain alive in our hearts. And when we lose our hope, you know what? Our heart can get sick. And you know what? I don't know about your church, but we are tired of being sick. We're tired of our heart being sick. That we want our hope in our heart to be whole in our Savior, whom is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We got to eat here today. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, once you obtain something, you don't need to hope for it any longer. You already have it. It's when you don't see it that your hope has a reason to exist. See, you already have it. You already have it. You already got it. Once you've obtained something, once you've already received something, you know what? You don't need to hope for that any longer because we already have it. It's when we don't see it that your hope has a reason to exist. Let me read that one more time. The fact that you don't see it Gives hope a reason to remain alive in your heart when you haven't seen it. Because once you've obtained something, you don't need hope for that any longer. You already have it. It's something that you already have. So you, you're you hoping you already have it. Okay? And so, it's when you don't see it. When you don't see it, that your hope has a reason to exist. See, 
the the broadcasting, the radio, we already have it. It's something that I already have. It's something that I'm already working in my life. It's something that that coexists with me because I already do it. And I have radio international all around the world, touching lives all around the world. I have it. It's with me. Now, I can physically go to a place and do my podcasting and do my preaching and teaching and all these other things. But God has opened the door where I can have access to radio 24-7. That's the reason why I can come in the morning, I can come in the afternoon, I can come in the night. I can come at any time at my expense, amen, that God puts into my heart this word of God, I'm telling you, and bring it to your lives. Why? Because I can't put God in a spot or in a slot, come on now, of this certain timing. I used to go into the room where I would walk in and just have that 30 minutes. Just that 30 minutes. And those 30 minutes would spend me a lot of money (laughs) of going in on that certain time. Which is wonderful, which is great if that's what God leads me to do. But when God had opened this radio, Crossing Borders International, Cruzando Fronteras, con el Nuevo Alerta. Literally, we are on platforms of Deezer and Google Podcasting. We are on all the podcasting there as well on Spotify and iHeartRadio. So many other aspects where I've expanded and opened up internationally, truly all around the world. And that's what we want to do through television. And so I need y'all as partners in with this to bring this word of God globally. Amen. And as God is opening these doors, that's where we're going to be able to go in international. Now, just as we have our radio, now we will be able to do it through television. I'm telling you, God is expanding and opening so many doors of opportunities that we are so thankful and grateful unto the Lord. Your partnership at any amount will bring us into as well blessing you with gifts as well. Amen. And so I want to thank you. Maybe you got to pray about it and ask the Lord. And you know what? We as being unified um, message me and just let me know whatever God lays into your heart and you know what we will be praying and we will be partners in this amen God bless you see when you don't see something happening we we, we hope more and our hope is more alive when we don't see something because something that we've hoped for we already have it And so that brings me back to faith because faith is the substance of the things that we hope for, the evidence of things we have not seen. So in other words, we need to grow up in our faith. What are we believing for today? That is the hope where God wants to. To ignite, where God wants to grow, where God wants to establish, where God wants us to expound and expel and enlarge, come on, and gain that territory that God has placed and put into our heart. It's only by God. And God can do it. Can I hear an amen? Hey, God can do it. Why? Church, because we are not by ourselves. God is working with us. God is working through us. God is working for us. And I'm telling you, God is all powerful and he can do so many things when we get on board with God. Now is not the time to lose hope. I want you to set your heart on God. If you have a sick heart, is your heart hurting? You know what? Let's set it. Let's set it today. Let's establish our heart 
and our hope in God so that way our heart will not be sick today. See, now it gets me back once again into faith. Faith is not like hope. Faith cannot be delayed. Faith is a, a tangible force. It's a substance that if you are exercising your faith, no one will be able to tell you that God's promises will not come to pa pass because all fear and doubt passes away. It just goes away because we are moving in our faith and you will be thoroughly convinced of God's promises in your life when we are moved in our faith. And so therefore there are no ups, therefore there are no downs, just a knowing and a sense of his presence is telling you, you know what, this too shall come to pass because faith will overcome all. All opposition that is coming your way. And faith is, faith is the fulfillment of your hope. It is the tree of life. Faith is the fulfillment of the hope. Because there is faith, there is hope, and there is love. And the greatest of all of these is love. And see, church, we must have the love because the love of God is real and God is real and God is love. We need to meditate on the love of God here today. Meditate. These are all high points what I'm sharing with you on setting your hopes up on God, on keeping your hopes up on God. And then we have to see something. If we're not seeing it in hope, we need to grab of hope even that much more and know that God is working that of your faith and as we have faith it works more than your hope because when you have faith it's already a done deal it's like you know what I'm done here faith is it I'm not hoping for it anymore I have faith for it now hallelujah what do you have faith for in your life because faith is the fulfillment of your hope and it is the tree of life. I want you to meditate on this. That as we meditate on the love of God, hope that is not deferred, delayed, disappointment comes from love. When we have that hope that is not deferred, we have the hope that is not delayed. We have the hope that it doesn't put us into this disappointment that it comes from love. When you know that this hope, this faith, this love is coming from God, you're like, once again, this is a done deal. That I know that by the faith, by the hope, and by the love. And it's the hope, the faith, and the love. <laughs> now, one more time. I know we read it. Faith, hope, and love. But I'm telling you, it begins in your hope. Because when you're hoping, you're still hoping until you know that it's for sure. And when you know that it's for sure, that is then your faith that can't move you because now you're walking in the love of it and it's yours it belongs to you amen it belongs to you because god has given it to you and so that hope is not deferred that hope is not delayed that hope is now not disappointed because it comes from the love God's love in you as in Romans 5 5 it says that hope does not disappoint us in other words God's hope will not leave us to shame 
Because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts. I mean, God has showed you so much love that that which you're hoping for has the faith. And that which the faith that you know no one's not going to take it away, that you are so set now in your love. So what are you hoping for? What has your faith been stretched on? That now it is such in a place of love that you know what? It's a done deal. It's a done deal because God has poured out within our hearts and God will not leave us to shame. Can I hear an amen? See, we must free ourselves from negative people. We must free ourselves from negative people. We're going to always have them. And they're always going to be around. But it's one thing when we entangle ourselves to negative people. See, there are people who think that they're doing you a big favor by managing your expectations or they're protecting you from this disappointment that God will not do it for you. Or you know what? Or get around people are just full of hope and can dream with you. I don't know about you, church, but I would be rather to be around people that are full of this hope and you know what? They might not yet be full in their faith, but that's okay because they have the hope. And they have the hope because when they're not hoping, they're being sick. And I'm telling you, we have the hope. We have the faith, full of faith, full of hope. And now we can dream and we can dream together and we can be in this together and we can do life together because God is growing us up in our hope, in our faith, and in our love. And see, when we have these type of relationships, they'll encourage us to live in our highest expectation and I want you to know that God wants you to live God wants you to be in your very highest expectation in life that you know what if you can believe I have someone says man I want to bungee jump man I want to just throw myself <laughs> out of an airplane and I'm like all right girl let's go for it you know because now you're resting and the momentum of, can you imagine the momentum of throwing yourself off of an airplane? But you got a parachute. You know that the, the parachute, or you have literally a trainer with you, or around you, or topping you, or that's taking care of you, that they've done it. They know about it. They've experienced it. And you're just, you're just flowing in the wind. I mean, I would rather do that than the bungee jump because I would think the aftermath of the of this part of after the free fall, you're just going to be, you know, just jumping like that. No, just throw me out of the airplane. I think that would be a better just fly at ease, you know, be, be the bird, be the tea bird, <laughs> uh, be alive, be encouraged, be enlightened, you know, just be in your hope in God. Amen. I'm loving this. This is life to me. I'm doing life with you. I'm encouraging your life. I'm encouraging my life and we are doing life together through this word of God. I'm telling you, I know that we are being challenged in every area and you're thinking like you're surrounding, like you got a spiritual helmet on and there's such a positive protection that you're like, oh, can't say that. Oh, can't do that. Oh, you know, I can't thank myself as a grasshopper. You know, oh, I'm gonna take this land, amen, hallelujah. You know what? I speak that over your life right now. That whatever land that you're having to take, maybe you got a new job, hey, maybe you got a new Boaz, hallelujah. You know what? Maybe you got something 
new going on maybe you're going through turmoil even if you are you know what don't stay down we're gonna go up you know what we just gonna blow up come on now i'm telling you we are blowing up with this word of god i'm gonna take you through you're gonna grab this hope we're laying hold of this hope here today hey i'm telling you lay hold of this hope today Now's not the time to have a, 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 a sick heart, but to lay hold of your hope. And then I want you to grab hold of faith like a pet bull. And when you know that God's love is in it, he is going to take you through. Can I hear an amen? So I know, I know long-winded here but that's all right because you know what we're taking you through we're gonna walk you through just like when you just been through surgery you know what just don't leave me up in my bed no i need someone to get me up i need someone to walk me around i mean take me around town come on out you just gotta be you boo i need that help amen and so we are getting this help here today and i want you to grab a hold of your your hope, your faith, and your love. Amen. See, my hopes are up. And I eliminate the notion of lowering my expectations. You know what? No. No, I'm not going to lower my expectations to the things of this world. No, I'm not going to lower myself to the expectations, even to the things that I'm seeing. You know what? You know what, baby? I'm blowing up. I'm going up. Because I'm moving higher. I'm higher in my thoughts. I'm higher in my attitude. I'm higher in my work. I'm higher in my place. I'm higher in my space. You know what? Because I'm blowing up. I don't know about you. But we're, we're moving on this. Can I hear an amen? See, I refuse to accept people's advice to not get my hopes up. See, I get my hopes up now. And I will keep them up. Let me see. Let me tell you this again. I refuse to accept people's advice of not get, not get my hopes up. You know, those people, those naysayers who say, oh, just give your hopes up. You know, it's never going to happen for you. You're never going to have that person. You're never going to have that Boaz. You're never going to have that lover. You're never going to have that caretaker. No, you know what? Don't say that I'm going to give up on my hopes. No, I get my hopes up now and I will keep them up. Can I hear an amen? See, I expect God's promises to come to pass in my life today. I expect good to come to my life here today in my family, in my home, in my church, and even in my job that in my relationships, in my body, and in my finances, I will not give up hope. I will remain strong. And I will go at this with longevity because I have my hopes in God. See, I'm going to expect ideas. I'm going to expect these favors and this wisdom to come to me. That even though I, I may not see it at every area, you know what? I expect these ideas. I expect this increase. I expect this favor. I expect this wisdom that it comes to me as I look up. Because like I said, we are blowing up here today. We're blowing up. We're blowing up. And I want you to blow up here with me. I want you to think about a balloon. A balloon that's lifeless. It's still, it has no movement. It's not going anywhere and it's not doing anything. But literally, when I begin to bringing that fresh breath of life into that balloon, it 
becomes a substance in my life that literally now it's flowing and now it's growing and it has momentum and has life. I still got my Mother's Day balloon here that's saying Happy Mother's Day. You know, it's still blowing, it's still going, and it's bringing forth life to my life because as I read that word, that word is expressing in my life, and I'm saying, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this word of God that is speaking to my life. And so, we're going to expect to receive the best of what God has for me today. This is what we're thinking, and this is what we're saying. And now I have a power thought for you today. Just imagine if you think that because of God's promises, I have unlimited and an unhindered hope and expectation. Because of God's promises, I have an unlimited I have unlimited, I know we like to say that, oh, we got all this unlimited calls, we got all this unlimited text, so we got all this unlimited going on in our lives, and you know what, I have all this unhindered hope, you know why, because I can hope, you know what, because I can do, you know what, because I can say, you know what, because I have this hope, and I have this expectation. Let's pray here today. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that there is such a high expectation in our lives that I am not willing to come down. No, people are just going to have to go up with me. We're going to go up because we are blowing up here today. We are moving in our faith. We are moving in our power and we are moving in our might. That I don't know where all this is going to come from, but I know that all of this comes from the Lord. My hope comes from the Lord. My promises come from the Lord. My faith will be well established because the love of God is flowing and that is in my life forever, forever together in Jesus mighty name so I want you to trust in the Lord here today and I want to thank all those that are channeling with me here on Crossing Borders International our groups our friends and all those that we have connection with and if you're not I want you to do so today get connected with our groups we also have a store Cruzando Frontera store I have various of links our Amazon minister, Tina Vieska, just Google it. Hey, it's an ebook, so you have access to that. You have access to our e commerce store. Also, to our e commerce store, it's a different store of all different varieties because you might be asking, What is it? What do you have? I got all types of goods from, um, from male to female to children and just all different for your productivity and life. Come on now, for your life here today. Also do Tina Viesca Cruzando Fronteras con Una Voz de Alerta as well. We have that as well um, on Cruzando Fronteras store. And then we also have Tina Viesca Designs, which is uh, my words. Words saying t-shirts, uh, words saying a productivity of different even hoodies come on now leggings because people love to wear leggings now and i share the word of god through these um aspects of christian wear material all that of value amen all that of value and so look at that see where god leads you and once again you know if god leads you to some type of partnership with us I want to thank you and feel free to message me. And if you have not given your life to the Lord, I want you to do so today. The promises of God are yours and they belong to you. So till next time, church, we love you. Crossing Borders International, Cruzando Fronteras, con una voz de alerta. Until next time, church, we love you. Bye for now. Thank you, Pastor Thomas, for coming in. 
Hola, hermana. Bendiciones. God bless you, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, family, family, for all those who connected with us. Even in our Instagram family, I want to say God bless you. We love you with the Lord. Thank you for connecting with us and seeing God increase us in every portion and part of our lives. I want to do life with you, see you strong, and keep on moving on. God bless you, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Spirit.